ancient warriors, prophets, kings, politics, conspiracies. No, this is just thousands of years of truth and history. It's the word of God. And I'm Wade. And I'm Jen. And join us as we add oil to our lamps, learning from and applying the Holy Scripture to our lives. As we go, as we set out in a dark world and uncover the things that want to remain hidden by shining the light of Christ. Awake, O sleeper. This is out of the darkness. In this episode of Odd Shots, we talk about the clown world we live in, from the infamous villain straight out of Gotham City, to a venomous threat that can be found in our veggies, and ending on a more serious note, with some questionable teachings in the church that hit us straight at home. So, Jen, I know the world's getting crazy. And those listening, they know it's getting crazy. And sometimes we've talked about, or I've even called it, clown world. The things that are coming out nowadays are so nutso that you have to step back and think, my goodness, are we living in a comic book? Some alternate reality. Things that we postulated, things that we made up out of our minds that seem so insane, so crazy, are actually coming to fruition. And it's it's pouring out into the physical world. And let me tell you, I almost didn't bat an eye when I saw this article. I thought, oh my goodness. Well, here we are. But looking at the billionaires of the world, they... I don't think they're equipped to deal with what I'm about to talk about. The Joker, loose in Missouri. Just a false alarm. I know the world's crazy. I know we're at a point in time where why not? Why not have, why not the Joker out there causing a bunch of mayhem? Of course, just, it'd just be a sprinkle on top of this Sunday of, crazy nut job stuff going on in in the country and the world right now. Throw him on the top of it. Why not? But luckily, the citizens of Missouri were spared the uh, tyranny of the Joker. Well, you know, I was thinking that maybe he could be Antifa's new leader. You know, um... In the Hong Kong riots, those were happening around uh, the time the Joaquin Phoenix Joker movie was just coming out, and people were painting their face up like the Joker, going around and vandalizing and and looting and stuff like that in Asia. Hmm. So it's really symbolic, and it's a real, he's an archetype. But uh, look, the people of Missouri had a reason to be a little on edge. But luckily, they were spared. Hey, but doesn't he give out free money? (laughs) Yeah, you can trust me. I'm giving you free money. (laughs) And then you have to have Prince music playing in the background. 
But the uh, Missouri State Highway Patrol is reassuring the public that Batman villain Joker is not on the loose after a staff member sent an emergency alert to mobile devices. Now this article is on the wonderful UPI by Mr. Ben Hooper. Missouri residents received alerts from the Highway Patrol Tuesday, and this is a few weeks ago, warning citizens of Gotham City to be on the lookout for a purple and green 1978 Dodge 3700 GT with the license plate number You Kid Me, a description that matches the vehicle used by Jack Nicholson as the Joker from the 1989 film. The law enforcement agent explained in a Twitter post that the clown prince of crime is not on the loose in Missouri, which does not have a place called Gotham City. This was meant to be a test message. There was no alert, the Highway Patrol tweeted. The agency said the message was meant to be a routine test of Missouri's blue alert system. The patrol regularly tests the blue alert system to ensure it works properly when needed. During the test, an option was incorrectly selected, allowing the message to be disseminated to the public. The agency said in the statement. And so I'm sure the citizens in Missouri were able to breathe a sigh of relief, knowing that the clown prince of crime would not be showing up on any other doorsteps anytime soon. I don't see any of the uh, billionaires out there uh, being able to take on that threat. None that I know of dress up and do vigilante things. Or do they? What about that uh, that Tesla guy? He can maybe he'll make some robots to to fight Joker. That's what he would do. He would make robots before he dressed up and fought crime. Or maybe um, you know his little Elon Musk name is his alias. Maybe he is a Batman type, <laughs> but I don't see it. I just don't see it. But you know, I was seeing some things uh, a couple weeks ago, but that uh, Amazon guy, Jeff Bezos, Bezos, I think he's the richest dude in the world. Mm -hmm. That guy who's like, I don't know, 50 something. He, he's been hanging out with The Rock. He's been taking some <laughs> taking some of the juice, and he's getting jacked. What? Yeah. That's nuts. Jack Bezos. <laughs> but, um, I mean, you're, yeah, you're, you're taking the stuff, taking the juice. But when you're a Little 50-year-old billionaire, why not, I guess? Still don't see him fighting crime, though. Sending drones out to people's doorsteps with their Amazon packages. How come I can't get my packages in two to three days anymore? What's up with that, Amazon? Well, you know, the price of it's still the same, too. Exactly. Why do we even have it? <sighs> Problems, I tell you. Meanwhile, in Australia... They don't have to worry about the Joker, but they do have to worry about scorpions. Australian woman finds scorpion and package of broccoli. Ugh. An Australian woman said she was shocked to open a package of broccoli from a local supermarket to discover a live scorpion lurking inside. Chloe Mitchell said her father-in-law bought the broccoli from the Aldi store in... I can't pronounce these names. Ula Dula, a New South Wales... Um, and she made a surprising discovery of preparing it for a meal. I put it in the steamer on the stove and then turned around to get the last few pieces and saw something crawling along the chopping board. Uh, so it was alive? It wasn't even, like, dead? I yelled for my husband to come to the kitchen and he said some choice words. Hmm. I haven't got a big imagination. I bet I know what those choice words are. She said the eight-legged creature became aggressive when she and her husband attempted to capture it. It was very angry, Mitchell said. I'm wondering, like, 
it must be a package of like organic broccoli. Maybe. Well, it obviously wasn't frozen. Must have been pretty fresh. Yeah, it would have to be. Remember when I found that caterpillar in my broccoli? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I couldn't eat bar- broccoli for the rest of the day. Uh, yeah. And it wasn't an organic bag. Organic broccoli. And then it makes you think of all the other bugs you may or may not have eaten. Ugh. Extra protein, I guess. But that's what the New World New World Order wants us to eat anyways, bugs. Yeah, they don't want us to eat, like, beef or whatever, right? Total, totally antithetical to my keto lifestyle. They want to make bug farms so that they can make you eat the bugs. <laughs> like chickens. Ugh. I just couldn't imagine eating bugs. Yuck. She said her father-in-law ultimately disposed of the scorpion, fearing for the damage it could do to the local ecosystem if it escaped from the home. Oh, it was a, the, I guess the company was called Aldi Mums. Aldi Mums. An Aldi representative told Seven News the discovery was not a common occurrence. I would hope not. Yeah, that'd be strange. I know there's like Aldi's and like the southern states, but I didn't know that they had any over there in that country. That's going to start being printed on the packages of broccoli. Is Most likely does not contain scorpions. But I mean, if it does, it's kind of like uh, Cracker Jacks. Remember Cracker Jacks? Yeah. There's a little prize in the box. Oh, yeah. So maybe this one could be like, you know, you may get a scorpion. Yeah. That's alive and aggressive. (laughs) That's to ensure the freshness and organicness of the broccoli. See, we are organic. (laughs) We will give you bugs. (laughs) See, this deadly scorpion would never have survived the transit if this if it couldn't feed on this nourishing broccoli which then can then you know can then nourish you as it has nourished this aggressive venomous scorpion that is now on your chopping block and you know if you're chopping it up chop up some of that scorpion throw it in there it's a bonus it's a bonus is the scorpion organic well i would guess you know We don't know. It's eating organic broccoli, probably. It might not even be organic broccoli. I'm just assuming. (gasps) What if the broccoli's not organic? What if it's GMO broccoli and then the scorpion... (gasps) Is it GMO scorpion? (laughs) Or it was GMO broccoli and it was spliced with scorpion DNA and the scorpion got in there because it was trying to get with its, its friends, its family, but it was broccoli. That's why it was aggressive. Maybe we need to stop eating broccoli. It's good covered in cheese. Or some type of asian sauce. I just like it with less caterpillars and scorpions. We strongly encourage customers to bring issues to our attention directly so we can review, the representative said. Without contact with the customer, we can confirm that it is very unusual. And that this broccoli hitchhiker isn't where they belong, which is likely back on our Aussie producer's farm. I don't know. For me, the plot thickens. There's more to that mystery. And with Aldi moms, there could be a whole scorpion conspiracy. And that was the odd news. We'll be back with a little bit more serious article. And yes, this one hits pretty close to home. Here with the last article. 
We get this from End Times Headlines. Look, some of you know him. Some of you have heard of him. But once again, Pastor Greg Locke's in the news. Why is that? Well, Greg Locke claims autistic children are demonized. Quote, ain't no such diagnosis in the Bible. Well, what does he have to say about the issue? Let's hear it. Do not, do not jump up right now and rebuke me for what I'm about to say. On three occasions, we're going to go through all of them, not today, thank God. On three occasions, kids were brought to Jesus, not of their own will, of their own volition, but by their parents, that had epileptic fits. Anger issues. Outbursts of emotion. And because we've called it possession, parents refuse to deal with it. Are you telling me my kid's possessed? No, I'm telling you, your kid could be demonized and attacked, but your doctor calls it autism. I don't care if you stand or not. I don't care if you leave or not. I'm telling you, there's deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ for your children and their children's children. There's deliverance in that. Ain't no such diagnosis in the Bible. Jesus cast out that oppressing spirit and the child was made whole that very hour, the Bible said, that very hour. I don't care if you get up. I don't care if you leave. I'm like, man, I'm already driving in the car. The tweet, which I hate Twitter, and I wish wasn't a thing, but kind of the big tweet is, you know, it starts off with a Christian. So there's your Christian hate preacher, Greg Locke, said this morning that children with autism actually suffer from demon possession. And so... Again, but that's that's the big sticking the first word there Christian and then the second word is hate then preacher <laughs> so to the general public who's looking that will associate all three of those words together Christian hate and preacher and then this guy Greg Locke is the uh, ultimate um, tool and uh, Every type of, he is everything that people who are so against Christianity love. He does everything. This is the person that is God's gift to atheists and people who hate Christians. This is the same guy who uh, talks about using the uh, Second Amendment to protect his First Amendment. He was the individual talking about all manner of, it's a weird, contorted, twisted version of the gospel that's married to patriotism. And like, I hate having to like be um, having a disclaimer with everything we say. Like, yes, I like being in America. Yes, I'm pretty sure it's my favorite country. I like living here more than anywhere else in the world. So the article on End Times headlines says, the, it's quoting Locke here, the word possessed is nowhere in the Bible, Locke preached. It is the Greek word demonized. I'm not talking about people that are completely possessed. I'm talking about Christians that are attacked by demons. They're demonized. This is important because we have been taught that it's either one way or the other, Locke said, referring to a demon possessing someone. Either possessed or you're not. Christians have been taught to believe if you're a Christian, you can't be possessed, and so therefore we have the idea that because you're a Christian, you can never be oppressed, bothered, and demonized. But you can be, and some of you are right now. 
The congregation applauded loudly after Locke said that people use medical terms instead of biblical terms because it makes us feel better, referring to spiritual oppression. Do not jump up right now and rebuke me for what I'm about to say, but I read the Bible too much to worry about what you think. Did you know on three occasions kids were brought to Jesus out of their own will? Their own, and this goes into what he was saying in the video. So, hang on just a second. Um, I do want to say that there are some things that he's mentioning that I do agree with. Mm. Okay, so um, to be frank, I don't like the guy. I can't stand him. And um, because I think that he puts a stain on Christianity. When he's done lots of things that would disqualify him from past, absolutely from a pastoral um, role. Absolutely. He should not be a pastor at all. And, I mean, you can go through Titus and Timothy and go through um, what overseers and all those people, the qualifications are, and he does not fit any of those. So he should not be, sorry, this is a hot topic for me right now because um, just listening to his clip and, you know, all this stuff. But I do have to say, yeah, I do agree with some of what he's saying. So I do agree that um, Christians, like actual blood bought, you know, born again believers in Christ who has the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, because, you know, when you believe you have the Holy Spirit. Um, you cannot be possessed, but yes, you can be oppressed. You can have um, demonic stuff uh, oppressing you. I agree with that. As far as the other stuff of every single like illness being attributed to a demon, I think that's lunacy. I think it's ridiculous. And for him to say things like, Oh, you know, um, autism isn't in the Bible. Well, um, obviously, there's many things that isn't in the Bible, right? <laughs> that doesn't mean that it's not true. Um, okay, sorry. You go ahead. Well, it's it's hard because he is reinforcing a stereotype of unintelligence. And so, yeah, you're right about, you can come into conflict with demonic entities or spiritual principalities, all of that stuff. We wrestle with not flesh and blood, but principalities, but treating every um, ailment, uh, every single thing as a, uh, a demon. We, 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 Jen and I have come from a church that would, think along the same lines and there's a movement today in the new apostolic reformation that would attribute every single thing to some demon go away headache demon go away cigarette demon go away soda demon go away sugar demon you know i rebuke you sugar demon in jesus name Uh, i rebuke you uh, i'm addicted to eating oranges demon in jesus name there is that type of thing, and we, Jen and I have witnesses firsthand, you know, from even the younger generation of people who are into this uh, idea of demon this, demon that, instead of, you know, realizing that humanity, the earth, creation is in a fallen state, and it sucks, we are in a state state of of imperfection and so every birth defect every thing that comes up every broken bone every ailment is a product of well not everything but most things are a product of the fact that we're fallen beings in desperate need of god who is perfect there's almost an inherent an inherent cry, an inherent hunger for what we once had with God, you know, to be able to walk with him in the cool of the day in the Garden of Eden, 
to be able to be in God's presence, to be able to be in the presence of perfection, in a state of perfection. Getting cuts, getting bruises, getting broken bones, having a birth defect, having a disability. Sometimes these things hurt and it's painful, but we forget the fact that Jesus says, and God says, my strength is seen and witnessed and perfected in weakness. All these things demonstrate our need for God. All these things can be used to make God's presence known and that God is real. But so many times people take the extremes. One, like, Hey, I can just rebuke everything away because we're little Jesuses and we we should be perfect just like him. We should be literally moving mountains and walking on water. And then you have the other side of questions. How, how can there be a God with starving children in the world and rapes and murders and all these things happening? So many people are on the extremes. This Greg Locke guy does a great job of giving those uh, people in the extremes something to feed on. There's nothing level-headed about what Greg Locke preaches. There's nothing intelligent. He uses a hyper-charismatic way to speak to his audience that they all feed on each other's energy. Certain things are said to get an applause or get an amen, which then feeds that energy more. And so as they're hearing, a, as they're preaching and they're hearing the clapping or they're hearing the applause or they're hearing the amens and they're feeding off of that, they also, in their minds, getting validation from that. I've heard people, when they uh, don't hear an amen when they think they should or hear an applause where they think they should, they They'll comment about it. Kind of lets you know that the focus really is on the message then. It's, it's about how they can work up the crowd. And this story stuck out for, for Jen and I because we're the parents of an autistic child. And our, though our child has autism, doesn't make him any less intelligent, doesn't make him any more oppressed. He processes things differently. He looks at the world differently. Sometimes that's uh, exactly what we need. And, you know, if you want to be technical, I think he has more of the fruit of the Spirit than Greg Locke does. Yeah, our son, I believe he's displayed one of the fruits of the spirits, and that is faith. He just knows. And sometimes I think uh, when we're dealing with certain disabilities or we're dealing with autism, a lot of us get frustrated because the person or individual isn't working, isn't thinking things the way that we think they should think about things or the way that we, or they should handle things the way we think they should handle things. And this modern society, the way the world is, the way the world works, everything in it, it's not designed or geared toward spiritual people. And yeah, we've dealt with meltdowns aggression fits in our son, but it didn't take taking him to someone like Greg Locke to pray the autism away, which again, this is just, this is candy to people who are so critical of Christianity. Again, this will be the poster. This will be what, what's associated with Christians. But going back to the world working against you, for us, when we noticed we were dealing with that we changed his diet. We changed a few things in his in his life, and it all worked out for the better. It takes a little effort, yeah, but him looking at things differently, understanding things differently, maybe be a, being oblivious to some things that wouldn't be oblivious to us. There's a lot that I end up learning, and yeah, we get frustrated a lot too. But in retrospect and reflection, we end up learning way more from him. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, you were, you were talking about his like faith, right. And, and when you were talking about that, it, it reminded me of, um, anytime anyone gets hurt, right. 
he is the very first one that says, let's pray about it. Let's pray to Jesus. Anytime people are going through troubles, that's what he does. Yeah, I always remember when he was uh, younger and you were telling me about, uh, he would talk about visiting with God. Mm -hmm. How old was he? Like two. And I remember you saying, you asked him, well, what, what did he look like? Do you remember what he said? Uh, not off the top of my head. He said, without any prompting or anything like that, he said, like a king. Oh, yeah, that's right. He looked like a king. He might have been three. I know he was, like, really little. And, like, he wouldn't have known because at that time he wasn't um, going to church. So he wasn't going to Sunday school or anything like that. And But he would um, say that he talked with God multiple times. And when I, I asked him, you know, what did he look like? Yeah, he said a king. And so... Look, I get autism now. I mean, it's what doctors just call everything. And I think it, with anything that we think doesn't fit in our paradigm of what we think things should look like or how things should behave or how things should act, we want to label that as a disability. We want to label it as a hindrance because it doesn't fit along our lines, along our conveniences. But sometimes God uses what seems simple. God uses what seems weak. God uses what seems unwise. And he displays his strength and wisdom in these things. And so I think it's important, though, if any of you out there who may know someone or even have someone in the family or is the parent of, just remember there's a lot of things that can be learned a lot of things that will cause you to personally grow. And hopefully that helps you grow in your faith. And me and Jen have some views on what may or may not cause autism. We're not going to get into that. Just know that God can be seen, realized, and his strength can be displayed in all things. And so, um, ending on a little a little more serious note here, a more tender note. But uh, I'm just going to throw this out there. If anyone's listening that may have uh, a child with autism or know someone with autism or a family member with autism, feel free to reach out to us. we got no problems fellowshipping and, and sharing our experiences and what we do now and things like that. Maybe there's things you want to share. I don't know. But anyway, thanks for being with us. And until next time, peace.